Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. The Earth provides water, warmth, and sustenance. Everything human beings and other animals need to survive, grow, thrive, and reproduce. Sometimes it seems like the sweetest, most hospitable oasis, a maternal place, a true Mother Earth. However, Earth has a dark side, and it kills far more than it allows to survive. It creates severe challenges to human life on a whim, summoning droughts, plagues, destructive storms, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Even the rocks, the Earth itself, can be as toxic as the world's worst industrial waste sites. There are rocks sitting out there that contain minerals that have racked up a serious body count over the years. Since the first humans walked the earth, the world beneath their feet has contained deadly toxins and poisons. There was a dawning of awareness about some of Mother Earth's dark secrets, even back to the Iron Age. During the Industrial Revolution, Miners quickly figured out the risks of some rocks. Just think of the proverbial canary in the coal mine. A rock is a collection, a mixture of minerals. A mineral has a distinct chemical composition and crystal structure. A rock is a mishmash of minerals and a bit of decayed organic material. The substances I'll be discussing are deadly minerals, inorganic chemical weapons in Mother Nature's arsenal, hidden in the rocks. Arsenopyrite is a compound of iron, arsenic, and sulfur with a brilliant steel metallic color often found in hydrothermal vents, deep volcanic fissures under the ocean, and in a kind of rock called pegmatite. Gold miners ran into this stuff when they dug in the wrong places, leading to the deaths of many thousands of people and animals. The arsenic in arsenopyrite is the poison culprit here. When the rocks are broken in pursuit of gold, it releases arsenic into the water. It's the oxidation or rusting of arsenopyrite that leads to water-soluble arsenic and subsequent acid mine drainage. Hutchinsonite is another one, a crystal of arsenic sulfide with thallium and lead that can also be found in hydrothermal vents. Thallium is an interesting element. Its salts are tasteless and highly toxic and have been used in rat poisons and insecticides. In history, it's also been used in political assassinations, including an attempt on Cuba's Fidel Castro. Orpiment is another arsenic sulfide mineral with a gorgeous orange-yellow crystal. It's found naturally in hot springs and geysers. Surprisingly, these toxic mineral crystals were once used medicinally in China and in ancient alchemical recipes despite their toxicity. This material can't be handled safely without gloves due to arsenic leaching into the skin. Torbernite is a deadly mineral crystal composed of hydrated green copper, phosphorus, and uranium, which is toxic and dangerous by itself besides being radioactive. Uranium is a double threat health hazard. Torbernite is found frequently in granite mines. Crocidolite, aka blue asbestos, has an illustrious career of murder. It causes fatal diseases like lung and mesothelial cancer. It's a fibrous, needle-like crystal and can form easily inhalable dusts. Asbestos was a prized industrial material for decades. Mining companies sought asbestos because of its amazing resistance to chemicals and fire. Designers and manufacturers wanted asbestos to make products like cement, ceiling tiles, and insulation. Crocidolite asbestos mining was big in Australia, Bolivia, and South Africa. Production has since ceased due to the serious health hazards posed to miners and consumers. Across the world, many thousands of miners have had their lives shortened by asbestos exposure. In Western Australia, crocidolite has literally erased towns from the map because the regions became too toxic after years of mining. Crocidolite extraction in just the town of Wittenoom 
caused more than 2,000 residents to die of mesothelioma and other asbestos-related diseases. The government forcibly evicted the last residents and removed the town from maps just to deter tourists from seeking what has come to be known as the most dangerous town in Australia. Blue asbestos has a cousin, chrysotile, white asbestos. This is actually the most common chemical form. It's been shown to lead to progressive lung diseases, as well as a nasty stiffening of the lung tissue. One thing that's interesting is that not everyone suffers mesothelioma or any other health effects from exposure to asbestos. Some tend to be susceptible, while others seem to be immune. Significant deposits of chrysotile asbestos are found all over the world in more than 60 countries, including Russia, which holds the world's biggest deposit. Over the years, more than 50 countries have banned mining of blue asbestos. Russian mines produce the most chrysotile, followed by those in China, which is also the world's largest consumer of the material. The mineral still has uses in producing brake pads for cars and asphalt roof coatings and specialized gaskets. People in Brazil and India still use asbestos in large volumes in roofing. Arionite naturally occurs as a fibrous mineral, like blue and white asbestos. It's typically found in volcanic ash. When the mineral is disturbed, arionite fibers can become airborne and act in a similar way to asbestos. Exposure causes lung cancer and mesothelioma. Some regions of Turkey have faced persistent deaths even today from the mineral still in the air. Beryllium is a chemical element underrated in toxicity. Phenocyte contains a lot of it. Exposure to this stuff causes lung cancer and a severe inflammatory disease of the lung called beryllosis. Traditionally, manufacturers use beryllium as a base material in ceramics and in special types of glass. It was found in the lion's share of fluorescent light bulbs for a while. Currently, its use is limited to making special metal alloys for computer hardware, telecom equipment, and windows for x-ray tubes, and in gyroscopes, missiles, and rockets. Phenocyte was a highly prized crystal, even formerly considered a gemstone. Mines in Russia's Ural Mountains produce phenocyte in large crystal forms. The mineral is also found in Colorado, in Brazil, as well as in Madagascar, Norway, and Zimbabwe. I had a professor who taught mineral processing, and he said he would rather spend eternity in hell than suffer from brilliosis. He warned to be careful of exposure to something like phenocyte. Brilliosis, or chronic beryllium disease, CBD, is an autoimmune condition caused by exposure to beryllium and its compounds. It's a particularly nasty form of poisoning and distinct from acute beryllium poisoning. Fortunately, it became very rare after occupational exposure limits were finally established around 1950. With single or prolonged exposure by inhalation, the lungs may be sensitized to beryllium. Beryllosis has a slow onset and progression some people who are sensitized may not even have symptoms. Continued exposure causes the growth of small inflammatory nodules called granulomas. This stuff can even be absorbed through the skin and cause abnormal growths. Granulomas are seen in other chronic diseases like tuberculosis and sarcoidosis. It can be hard to distinguish from beryllosis and other health problems. The earliest symptoms are typically cough and shortness of breath. Later, other symptoms emerge like chest pain, aches, weight loss, and high fever. The onset of symptoms can range from weeks to decades after first exposure. In some unlucky people, just a single encounter with beryllium can cause beryllosis. There is no cure for the condition and treatments are very limited. Potassium feldspar or K feldspar is a potassium aluminum silicate mineral in the family that includes orthoclase, monocline, and adaluria. The crystals contain small quantities of radioactive uranium that slowly forms radon gas, which is a major cause of lung cancer. K feldspar 
is also a major source of lead emissions. The mineral can be used to manufacture glass and ceramic products. In some places, even artificial teeth and scouring powders. Some varieties of potassium feldspar are even valued as gemstones. Cinnabar combines the acid-forming hazards of sulfur with the notorious poison mercury, earning it a place at the top among the Earth's most dangerous minerals. When this stuff is oxidized, the mineral produces a highly toxic mineral compound that causes developmental and nervous system disorders in babies and children. Cinnabar has a bright red, or sometimes brownish color. It occurs naturally as crystals, usually near volcanic activity in hot springs. Cinnabar was once used to produce bright orange pigment for ceramics, murals, and even tattoos in ancient times. In recent years, extraction of the material has slowed due to the decline of overall demand for mercury. Today, most cinnabar mines can be found in China and Algeria. Stibnite is a highly toxic sulfide mineral with an interesting orthorhombic crystal lattice, and it's also a rich source of the highly toxic metalloid element antimony. Surprisingly, stibnite pastes have been used since ancient times for cosmetics to darken the eyebrows and lashes. The mineral was also used for a while to make eating utensils until it was discovered it was causing poisoning from antimony ingestion. Lung cancer, kidney disease, autoimmune disorders, and silicosis are all caused by exposure to one of the most common minerals on earth, quartz, silicon dioxide, the major component in a lot of the planet's sand. It's the second most abundant mineral in the earth's continental crust, but sometimes, for some people, if it's ground down in just the right way, just sand can be a deadly poison. Mother Earth loves us, sort of, but there seems to be a bloodthirsty psychopath among Mother Nature's many personalities. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.